Hello everyone, well I've released a new version of NoTrack, version 0.9.4. Well, NoTrack is a network-wide blocking of tracking and advertising websites. You can run it on something like a Raspberry Pi and you can protect all your computers and mobile phones in your home network. I worked quite heavily on this over the holidays, uh, predominantly on trying to sort out theming, but I also added a couple of new features as well. So in this video I'm just going to show you what I've done and a little bit about uh, what I'm thinking of for the next version. I tried to get a more consistent look and feel across between the different screens in NoTrack. So this is the DNS queries page. I can look at all the DNS queries my systems have made across the course of the day, looking in grouped of uh, the domains or timings of them. So yeah, I can look back literally through the day and through longer periods as well. Another feature which I did some more work on was the alerts or analytics page. So the aim of this page is to find tracking websites which your computers may have accessed without being blocked. This runs on your server and no data is exchanged with me. Various rules are written in a script which it uses to interrogate the queries database every hour and it just tries to identify what does look like a tracking website. A new feature which you might have noticed is this copy domain button, or this copy button which I've added to quite a few of the tables. So yeah, you can copy the domain to clipboard and you can paste it into a search engine or somewhere else. Just try and find out more about these websites. Yeah, got the option of blocking it, reporting it. And I did a little bit more about uh, the lack of spying in no track. So yeah, I'll link to that video at this point if you want to know a bit more about how it works. Recently, this page identified a very interesting tracker, something which no one seems to have written about. This company called Sublytics, and they say, identify and acquire more of your most valuable customers. So yeah, there's uh, no hiding what business they're in. They're trying to look at what you're doing across the internet and uh, yeah, pass that on to the uh, merchants or website owners. Their tactic seems to be very interesting in the domains they've chosen to register. If you look at it, that is track.sublytics-5 and what was that, a 12-digit hexadecimal number? So to put all those domains into a block list would make it, oh, I don't even know, what, hundreds of megabytes large? It, it would be ridiculous. It would grind the device to a halt and make it unusable. So instead I've got to try and find these websites and I've been uh, kind of finding this a bit difficult at the moment. I've got uh, an API I use from Cisco that interrogates their database because it, this company utilizes Amazon IP addresses to host their websites. Amazon have about 200 million IP addresses which I can interrogate but it's going to take a while. So we'll try and find more of these but yeah this is uh, the assortment I've found so far. Shame they're not quite as predictable as this service from IBM that use MKT and yeah, they've just been registering the domain sequentially. So yeah, they're very easy to find. But yeah, random hexadecimal numbers, nah, that's uh, going to take a while. And that's uh, a very cheeky tactic to use because they're just trying to avoid being blocked. Anyway, continuing on with the changes, this is more of a look at the style length. Yeah, again, consistent look across the pages. I do wonder whether to keep this page, the site's blocked, because this is only HTTP, unencrypted lookups, because uh, any tracking or advertising sites get directed to a sinkhole page on the device. Unfortunately, the HTTPS certificate is invalid, so your browser will prevent the connection from happening in the first place. So yeah, there's very little being listed here, but we can see that Avast on Miss Quid's computer is, is connecting via HTTP. So yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of there's quite a lot there. But yeah, in days gone by, this would have been busier. One feature which I've added is the ability to add static hosts via the web GUI. I've redacted all the information on this page, but as you can see, you can add new hosts by adding a MAC address, host name, and an IP address. And you can get the MAC address from the leases page. I'll try and make this a bit simpler, but this is kind of the concept which I've started with. And you can tag them as uh, different devices, desktop, server, phone, Raspberry Pi, entertainment. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out. 
This is more of an example of the consistent look and feel and it gives you an idea of how many block lists you can add to the device simply by point and click. And you can add your own custom lists as well by fixed files or additional download pages. Same sort of concept on a top level domains. This is quite a good idea. You can literally block top level domains. Some of these top level domains can be really badly abused to host just sites you really don't want to go to, malware, phishing, just, yeah, they're like the worst of the worst on the internet. And it's nice just to be able to block the whole domain and prevent an entire connection. But should you decide you actually want to block the domain but access one or two sites within it, you can add them to your whitelist. So I have provided various options here. This is the investigate page, which shows you a bit more about the ownership of domains, how much you've accessed them in the past month. It can be useful for trying to identify how you've got to a particular website because it, well, it can display more information here. I've just opted for a simpler view here. So if you want to get no track or just look through the code, it's all open source hosted in GitLab. For the next release, my aim is to improve the searching ability and to tidy up this user interface a little bit more, get rid of some of these drop-down menus, replace them with more of a point and click interface, particularly like this one here, the request type. I want to add more times here that you can search through and actually give more advanced interface here. So you can actually type in or select specific dates to look through. So there's plenty to do and keep me amused with this. Now, one of the questions I do get asked quite a bit is how does this compare to Pihole? And honestly, I haven't got a clue. I've not used Pihole in years. But anyway, it wouldn't be fair for me to do a comparison because I'll of course say that no track is the best, or maybe I won't, but whatever. It wouldn't be fair for me, the creator of this project to do a comparison. I would need someone else to do a comparison. So yeah, that's, that's all I can say. I, I can't compare the two. Well, that was a look at some new features in NoTrack 0.9.4. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.